Hi, here I am again to talk to you about the planning task one artifact of part D assessments. Um, this is very similar, of course, to part C instructional materials. This is a required file. We know this because on your artifact chart in your handbook, it'll say minimum one, maximum one. There is not a limit on pages, however, that differentiates it from the instructional materials. Um, the file type needs to be uh, one of these. Uh, normally what I have my students do is create it um, on a Word document. Keep it on a Word document for a while because it's easy to edit. And then at the end, um, when they're reviewing their materials before submission to Pearson, I always have them go in and save that document as a PDF. And um, that differentiates it from the rest of the files, makes it easier to find on the upload day. Um, so you're going to submit all of your assessments into one file. And um, you do need a label by the corresponding lesson. And you need to order them in the way that they're used. Um, here is an example of one. Um, this person has um, not just given examples, uh, samples of the um, actual documents, but she's also done some explanation uh, with them. She even went so far as to talk about the subject-specific emphasis, which is great. I've got a video on subject specific emphasis if you don't know about that. Um, and then, uh, so she's just got got it all the way through. It looks really good, very nice and clean, easy to understand. And I've got another example here. Um, this is one, um, of course, it's elementary literacy. And she's just done, it's just very simple what she's done. Nothing complicated. So you can be simple, you can be complicated. The whole point is to have the evidence that you're that you are needing um, for uh, your uh, score to look at. So in your commentary, especially especially in prompt five, you'll be referring to um, the whole point of prompt five is in task one is to convince the scorer that you have uh, monitored uh, learning for all those subject-specific emphasis um, throughout the learning segment. So you have to talk about both informal and formal assessments. Um, a, a, one of the most common questions that I get is, do I have to include the assessment that's used for task three? And my answer is, it really doesn't matter. Um, there's no reason not to, but you're going to put the actual assessment that you use in task three, um, you will put it at the end of your assessment commentary. Uh, when we get there, uh, you'll see what you are, are needing to do. Uh, you can go, I've got, a, I've got a channel on that <laughs> too, so you could go and a playlist on that too, and you can look and see what you want me to do. So this person has uh, put in her summative, and she's put in um, a reading conferences rubric. So this is, you know, high quality, um, especially here at the end. So um, let me know if there's anything that you have questions about, and I'm always here to help you. And don't forget to be using that artifact chart. It's in the back of everybody's handbook. If you're not using it, you're going to be losing it.